1 to 7. In you, O oh Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver in your righteousness. Bow down your ears to me. Deliver me speedily. Be my rock of refuge, a fortress of defense to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net which they have secretly laid for me. For you are my strength, and to your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. I have hated those who regard useless idols. But I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your mercy. For you have considered my trouble. You have known my soul in adversity. May the Lord have a reading, a blessing to his word. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good to see you this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, allow us to be here one more time. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to thank him. Thank you. Well, let us look to him in prayer. Most holy and everlasting fathers, again, we come thanking you for your many, many blessings. Because you've been so good to yeah. your master. You've been better to us than we into ourselves. Hallelujah. And we thank you. Amen. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for your son Jesus, yes. who gave his life and rose on that Thursday morning that we yes. might have yes. life and have it more abundantly. Yes. We thank you. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father. We, we had 10,000 tongues. We couldn't thank you enough. Hallelujah. Oh, gracious Father, just help us to uh, continue to praise your holy and righteous name yes. because your name is worthy of all praise. Yes. We thank you. Thank you. We pray that you just bless us today as we go into our service. We pray that everything we do, we will do it in your name yes, so that you will get all the glory and all the honor. Bless us today. Bless us with your word, dear Heavenly Father. Help us to be willing to do what pleases in your sight. Yes, we don't want yes. credit for anything. Yes. In the mouth we pray the truth and remember the sick everywhere. Go into the hospital yes. and uh, stop by each sick bed. Yes. Cool their scotch and fever, these their aches and pain. Yes. Help them to realize that if you have the Father, that you are a doctor who has never lost a patient. Yes. Oh, gracious Father. And you're still in the healing business. Yeah. Touch your body everywhere. Yeah. Heal them, dear Heavenly Father. Let them not to remember the bereaved family. Yeah. Touch their hearts. Yeah. Comfort them in your own way of comforting. Yeah. Oh, gracious Father, remember the one going to preach your holy and righteous word this morning. Yeah. Help them, dear Heavenly Father, preach so that some sinner man, sinner woman, Come running, crying. What shall I do to be saved? Yes. And then above all the last, we pray just give us all that love that uh, runs from heart to heart and from breath to breath. Yes. Help us to love one another as yes. you have loved us. Yes. Bind us together, the Heavenly Father, and such close knit Christian love so one can't fall without the other and feel the effect. Help us to lift each other up. Yes. Then help us to lift up your name. Yes. Oh, you yes. say that you'll be lifted up. You will draw all men unto you. Yes. Oh, gracious Father, just be with us and help us do what pleases in your sight. Yes, sir. And when we've done all that we can do, we can't do it no more. Yes. Give us a home somewhere in your kingdom. Oh, we can praise your name throughout the eternity. These all are blessed. We ask your son Jesus' name. For his sake, amen.
going to ask First Lady to come and sing for me this morning. I won't complain. I need to hear that today. I just need to hear that this morning. And after she finished, you were here for my past. Sweet! 
Right. Before I see you in the morning, I'm gonna say this. Uh, First Lady West, uh, you got me on that. <laughs> and you sit to yourself and you open up your mouth and I said, Lord, that's what I Bless you, first lady. Bless you. Amen. 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 musicians right here, boy, they catch on to everybody. I don't care where you are. That is awesome. That is using your gift. And I am grateful to God that we are all able to share together. Amen. Amen. So good morning. How are you? Good morning, good morning, good morning. God is good, ain't he? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. Last night I was, I went out of town with my son for his birthday. I was supposed to catch a flight in last night. The flight was supposed to leave at 9 o'clock last night. Get here about 10, past the west, which it was funny. They gave me my itinerary and I get to the gate. I'm sitting at the gate and they changed the gate. But they didn't announce that the gate had been changed. So I'm looking up, I'm like, wait a minute, why are you, this plane ain't being loaded? So by the time I ran to the back part of the airport, the plane was gone. Mm. Oh, I said, I said, well, y'all, I, I got to get on the plane. And I got church in the morning. Amen. And uh, they said, well, we don't have nothing available until Tuesday. And I said, excuse me. So we were in Vegas, and so my son, they went out, we went out there celebrating my grandkids and everything. But the Raider game was out there. There's about three different festivals out there, so everything is booked up. So I didn't panic. I said, where the rental car place at? <laughs> and I ran down and got a rental car at 10 o'clock last night and said, I will be at church at 8 o'clock in the morning. Crazy thing is, I got to drive the car back later on the night. <laughs> but I'm gonna go home and go to sleep before I do that. Amen. But to show you that when you're committed to something, excuses don't work. Yeah. My dad told me he says excuses is like the nose on people's face. Everybody got one. Yeah. And ain't none of them really excusable. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we just want to share with you briefly today. Um, and then uh, I do want to let Cedar Grove know we, we won't meet this Wednesday for Bible study. I have a few appointments that is not going to allow me to be finished at a meeting that won't allow me to be finished in time. And then I also told the people, y'all going to stop scheduling your meetings on Wednesday night. Either that or I'm going to resign from this board. Amen? Amen. So I got obligations on Wednesday. All right. This one, is, uh, this one is a budget meeting, so I have to be at this meeting. Amen. If you will. For a few minutes this morning, can you meet me over in the book of Joshua? The book of Joshua, chapter number seven. Then I want to say good morning to the musicians. Amen. Awesome. Good to see you, brother. Good to see y'all. Amen. And um, and also while you guys are getting there, I, I was I, I was looking to plan us a concert on December. But again, I'm one of those ones I like to make sure it's right. So if we're going to push that to January, so we're going to get it right, we're going to start the year off real good. Is that all right? Amen. Because when we rush and do things, then we have to do it. God said when we do something, we should do it decently and in order. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I believe in that. So we be over in Joshua chapter 7. And we're just going to look at a few verses today. We're going to look at Get in verse number 24. When you have it, just stand to your feet. Amen. And I won't be before you long, but I do believe that God has uh, a word for the house this morning. Amen. The Bible declares that then Joshua and all of Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, the silver, the cloak, and the bar of gold, his sons, his daughters, his ox, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and all that he had and brought them up to the valley of Acre. Joshua said, why have you brought us trouble? Today the Lord will bring you trouble. So all of Israel stoned them to death. 
then burned their bodies, threw stones on them, and raised over him a large pile of rocks that remain still today. Then the Lord turned from his burning anger. Therefore, the place is called the Valley of Anchor, still today. If I can use for a subject today, I just want to use a simple subject. The rippling effect of your sins. I knew I wouldn't get an amen on that one. We got some folks that's rippling right now. Pastor West, we got some rippling effects going on. Right now, but we're going to talk about it anyhow. Amen. 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 I don't even have a car started, so I ain't even worried about running too fast. Amen. Lord. Father, thank you now for this time that we have to share. We thank you for your word. We ask your God that you declare it clearly through me. That when they hear, they don't hear me, but they hear you. When they see, they don't see me, but they see you. Have your way, O oh God. Allow the word to come forth with full power and conviction. That we may know, understand, learn. And then adjust ourselves that we may be able to be pleasing to you in everything that we do. And we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you've read this story, you will find out uh, in this particular passage or in this story itself, you will find out that God had just brought the children of Israel to a massive victory. The story begins to tell us about how, um, remember prior to this, they found out that the children of Israel had finally made it from out of the wilderness. God allowed them to cross over the Jordan River. And then after he allowed them to cross over, he gave them the victory over Jericho. Not only did the walls fall, but they took hold of Jericho. Amen. Now, as God is moving them forward, the thing that got me the most is simply this. It's amazing how when God begins to send blessings in the magnitude that he sent them, but you're still going to have somebody that's still going to want more. Amen. Have I got a witness? It doesn't matter how blessed you're being. It still seems as if in your own, um, in your own mental capacity or whatever you would call it, you still seem to want more. Amen. Enough is still never enough. And then what begins to happen is when we have a desire to want something, it doesn't matter what the order has been put before us. We still try to manipulate and figure a way around it to get this extra stuff that we, we, we tend to want. In other words, it's hard for us to be satisfied with what we have because somewhere down the line we feel like we always need more. Have I got a witness? If I can use that just for in the church in the church form right now, it's amazing how I'm gonna use the ushers. I'm gonna use the ushers if that's all right. I'm gonna use the ushers. If you have ushers and they do a fine job ushering, but some reason every once in a while you'll find an usher that thinks she's a choir member. Amen. Come on here, somebody. Amen. Can't hold a note on the side of a barn in a 47-gallon bucket but yet always in the back trying to sing. You're not satisfied with being a blessing at the back Amen. door. You want some something that God told you that ain't yours. Leave it alone. But you want it anyway. Have I got a witness? Amen. So we find out now that as they begin to go and God is setting them up for more blessings to come, we find now that as they are preparing, we have this village, this town that is full of nothing but gold and all kind of good stuff. And God sent an order and he said, listen, I want you guys to go up and, and handle your business, but don't touch nothing. Don't touch any of this tangible stuff. Have I got a witness in here? He said, I don't want you to touch any of this tangible stuff. Now, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Y'all know me. I, I like to talk about food. I use food as an example. Amen. So you can't tell me to go to Popeye's and don't touch no shit. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? You can't tell me don't touch the red things and the rice, but you leave me at Popeye's all by myself, and ain't nobody around. You say, ain't nobody working at Popeye's, so you go in there. You can go in and you can have you some soda pop, but you can't have no, don't touch the chicken, don't touch the red beans and rice, don't touch them biscuits and put the honey on it. Don't touch it. And then when I think ain't nobody looking, I go and grab me a wang and I go grab me a pea or two. I, uh -huh. So now God has given this order. He has said simply this, do not touch anything. Joshua has put the order out as he had received it from God. And he says, do not touch anything. 
Now, the, the funny thing is, there's always going to be one person that wants to kick against the prayer. Have I got a witness? You always going to have, if you get in a bunch of people, it's always going to be one that's going to want to do their own thing. Right. Hey, amen. Now, if you look at the person on your left and they doing what's right, and you look at the person on your right and they doing what's right, then you need to look at yourself because one of y'all going to mess up. Come on. Hey, amen. Keep looking up here. Ain't nobody going to shoot on that. <laughs> So now we find that the order has gone out. The order has gone out. Now, now, now God is about to allow some things to happen, but yet we have one person that's going to do the wrong thing. And this young man, his name was Achan. And if we, if we look at the meaning of Achan or what his name symbolizes, Achan's name refers to trouble of Israel. In other words, his name already solidified what he was all about. Have I got a witness? That's one thing I want you to understand about Bible, about the Bible, that there are names in the Bible. When you begin to talk about different people in the Bible, research what their name means, because a lot of times their name, their name is based off of their character. You'll find out that the things that they do is, and that's why I tell people all the time, be careful what you name your kids. Mm -hmm. Be careful, amen, because Sheikah, Sheikah may not just be the cute name that you thought you had. Sheikah may have a meaning that you don't understand that can set the tone for the rest of her life. Come on here, somebody. Come on. You can attach a name to somebody that that person will become what that name is. That's why you got to stop calling your kids stupid when they don't do what you want to. Crazy when you don't when they don't do what you want to. You ain't gonna amount to nothing. You gonna be just like your daddy. And when they get to that age, you can't tell them that they're wrong for being that because you named them that. You called them that. It was engrafted in their mind and their spirit, so they have become what you have named them. Amen. Aiden was named. And his name symbolized trouble. So we find now, watch, we find that Achan now, what he does is, he goes over. So when you look at it, you have all of these people that are going up, getting ready for a battle. You're getting ready to do what they're supposed to do. And you have this one person that takes something, and ain't nobody see him take it. The Bible says that he took a robe. He said he took some gold. He took these coins. Then he came back and dug a hole up in his tent and put the stuff in his tent and covered it up. Now Joshua didn't see him and none of the other soldiers seen him. But somebody in that tent had to recognize that something was different about their tent. Come on, I wish I had a witness over here. What am I trying to say? You can't sin and don't believe that somebody in your camp ain't going to recognize that you sin. And the problem is this. When you recognize the sin and you go along with it by not saying nothing about it, you're just as guilty as the person that committed the sin. Have I got a witness? So, so, so therefore, you can't sit around and smile and say, I didn't do it, so I ain't got nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't do it, but you're still included when you don't say something against what they did and try to get them to the right place. Because why? No matter what happened at the end of the story, had one person told them you were wrong, you need to repent and get it right, then the effect of what happened would have been reversed at that moment because the graciousness of God would have said, hey, because you have repented and turned from your ways, you still suffer a consequence, but it may not be as detrimental yeah. if you don't have to get called to the table, but rather you go and you give it up before you get called in. Right. Right. Now, I got a witness? Yeah. I'm going to give you an example. My mama used to always tell me, if you tell me the truth, then the whooping won't be as bad if there is a whooping. Well, it took me about 14 whoopings before I decided to try to tell the truth. Come on, this one. I know I'm talking to about three or four people in here right now. You, your mama asked you, who ate that piece of cake? You got chopping all on the side of your mouth, and you say it wasn't me. Have I got a witness? And the moment that you go in and you say, mama, it was me, then you look at it, you bracing yourself for a whooping. She said, that's all you needed to do was tell the truth, and now you won't get the whooping I might not be able to go outside for a day, so I still have a consequence, but I don't get the whooping and not get to go outside. Have you got it? But when I lie, I get a whooping, I can't go outside, not for the day, but for the whole week. Have you ever been on punishment for the whole week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all your friends is outside playing, they laughing at your window, telling them, come on out! And you sit at the table like, I can't, And all I had to do was what? Tell the truth. Yeah, yeah. And then what happens is, now, if we had a game, we 
had a team that was outside. Now what happens is, no matter what my position is on the team, now the team didn't commit the sin, but the team is going to still be affected by the sin because now I can't participate and do my part right. because I messed up. Now it's just not just me in trouble, but now my team is in trouble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all got that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But let me show you this. Let me show you this. So now we find here that Achan did all that he had to do. This story itself is a story of warning and it is a story of hope. Amen. It's a story of warning. The story of warning is saying, if you do this, you are subject to that. Yes, sir. But the, sub the, 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 the point of hope is, if you do it and turn, mm -hmm. then you won't suffer as much. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. Amen. I know I'm walking down somebody's street this morning because we got some folks in here that sinned on your way to church this morning. Amen. Amen. I'm, try, I'm trying to help you to turn before we before you come on. Amen. Amen. Not me. <laughs> so what I want you to see and I want you to notice and understand that there are two things about this story. There's two things about sin that I want you to remember. One thing about sin is this. You, your sin can never be hidden. It can never be isolated. All right, your man. sin will never be isolated. Amen. You may cover it up from the people that's around you, but there's one people, there's one person that the Bible says that he never sleeps, yeah. nor he slumbers. The Bible says that he's everywhere at all times. He's, he's everywhere at the same time. Yeah. So you may not let nobody physical see you, but spiritually God sees everything. Matter of fact, yeah. God even seen it before you even completed doing it yeah. because he's the one that he's infinite and he, he knows these things. Yeah. So you will never be able to isolate your sin. The other thing I want you to understand is this. Your sin will get exposed. All right, all right. All right. The, 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 and let us know. What is done in the dark, come to the light. it will come to the light. It may not come to the light when you think it will. But when the light comes on, I'm going to let you know you will wish you was in his will. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Because the light is going to come on. And what happens when the light comes on? Be exposed. Mm. Uh, I'm country, so y'all don't pay me no attention. Have y'all ever, ever been in a place where they had those little things in the house called roaches? Oh, yeah. yeah. Amen. And as long as it's nighttime, roaches is in there doing their thing. They partying, they having a good time, they socializing, they on the corner, they doing everything they want to do. Man, man, come on here. They, they are having club meetings, they ride motorcycles, and the moment the light comes on, what happens? They're exposed, and then they begin to scatter because they don't want to be exposed. So you with me? Which is the same thing with sin. The enemy is the same way. The enemy moves in the dark, but that's why God says if you let the light on the inside and you shine for all the world to see, too much light will make the enemy not want to come close because he does not want to be exposed. Have I got a witness? So now we find here that Achan had a sin that was covered up. And the sin was covered up and it was hidden for a good period of time. It was hidden, but now it begins to get exposed because as God set them up to go up against AI, he set them up to be able to do something. He set them up to have a victory. They just came for one massive victory. They was heading for another massive victory. But remember when God puts an order in place, the order is intended to be to be governed the way he was given it. Have I got a witness? Yeah. And not only is God going to give an order, but he's going to make sure that everybody knows the order. Everybody's going to know what it takes. Everybody's going to know what you can and you cannot do. Uh -huh. And then you are supposed to operate in that if you expect the hand of God to move on your behalf when you get in that. Have I got a witness? Yeah. So now we find that God's hand was on them prior to this, but now he sets them up for a battle against AI. All right, all right. And now listen, this is the time now that sin gets exposed, but now it comes the ripple. Have you ever seen a ripple in the water? Mm -hmm. If you look at water when it begins to ripple, mm -hmm. if the water ripples from the outside, the middle does not start moving until the ripple, come on somebody, I want you to catch that. If you throw a rock in the water, no matter where the water lands, where the rock lands, everything about the water is going to begin to move at a particular time. Everything don't move together, but it slowly begins to move down the chain. Have I got a witness? Yes, sir. So therefore now we find that Achan has done what he's done. God is setting them up. Now they're about to go into battle. And then what begins to happen is God sends a, uh, uh, Joshua sends a few men down there. And the Bible says that 35 of the men 
They sent a few men because it wasn't that many folk for them to defeat. Right. And you got to witness, and I know what we're capable of. Watch this. See the Grove, I know how we can lift up our hands and begin to praise God. I know how when we get on one accord, how the, how the Spirit of God begins to move and, and nobody leaves here the way that they came. I know how it is when we do it the right way. But when somebody comes up in here with some hidden sin, what begins to happen is the effect and the power of it does not be the same. Now we're struggling to get our praise out. Now we're struggling to feel the presence of God. Now we're struggling because it is some known sin in the camp and the whole camp begins to suffer because of the disobedience of one person and I need us to know and understand that if prayer is a thing that we do, we ought to pray coming in, we ought to pray while we're in, we ought to pray when we're going out and we ought to pray when we're thinking about going back because prayer is a thing that will set the tone for everything so come up in here if you want to all devilish if I prayed on my way you might be the one carrying the sin. But before we get done with what we are doing, if my prayer means anything to heaven, you going to repent, you're going to do something, you're going to leave, because the rest of us is going to get out of here. So, so we find that now Achan has done what he's done. The army has gone up to fight. The Bible says there's about 35 or 36 men, 38 men, something like that, that died. That shouldn't have died. The problem is this. You have men that lost their life. Not because of what they did. But they lost their life because of what somebody else did. All right, all right. When the order was given to us all. I got to be punished because Josh decided he wanted to do it the opposite way. That's right. That's right. Come on in here, somebody. Yeah. That's why you got to be careful of your circle of friends. That's right. Because you roll with these different people, but you don't know what these people are doing when you're not around. That's right. And then when you guys get into a place where you think everything is cool, then you wind up in trouble because of something that they did. Right. Come on. And now you're guilty by association. Yeah. Have I got a witness? That's why Josh, I like to tell my young men, I like to tell them, you need to watch your homeboys because some of your homeboys is doing things and if they got gang affiliation attached to it, all it takes is them for them to pull you over while you're with them and now you become guilty by association. So whatever they did, they're going to put what they did on you. And if they got the homeboy code, ain't nobody going to tell the truth in the first place. And if you come... Yes, it is. So, 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 so now, if Josh drove the car, but I'm the one that pulled the trigger, they're not going to look at who pulled the trigger if there's no evidence about who pulled the trigger. They're just going to look at the fact that Josh was driving, and I was in the car, and somebody died, and since ain't nobody telling nobody nothing, Josh goes to jail, and Josh was just getting out work, giving his homeboy a ride home. Now he has it. So now, Aiden has done something and now you got these 30 some odd men that have died because of a bad decision, because of greed, because of flesh that has more power over you than the spirit, because you want more than what God has allotted for you to have. Come on here somebody, I'm talking to somebody right now. I'm talking to somebody right now. You can't afford the gas in the little buggy you got now, why you want the big car that's got eight cylinders and, and you got to put premium gas in there. Yeah, regular unleaded is $4.37 and the other gas is almost $6. And you want that car, you would sit in the driveway. You can't drive it because you can't afford to put the gas in it. But you want it because you want it. You don't want it because you ain't satisfied with what God gave you, but you want something more. And so now when God tells you to don't, you figure out a way to do so that therefore you can have and you don't believe that it's not going to become exposed and when it becomes exposed you may not be the one that gets the trouble you may not be the one that gets the effect but somebody down the line come on and it may not be your direct friend but the choices that you make impact your generations down the line have I got a witness because when God made the covenant with Abraham he says this covenant is going to be a blessing not just to you but to your seed and your seed after your seed and your seed after your seed and all of these generations are going to be blessed because of what you have done, the decision that you have made to have covenant with me. And the same way that those blessings come, those curses come the same way. So you shack up right now. You might live your life, but your great, 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 great grandson and granddaughter that you'll never ever meet will wind up breathing the definite the, the, the destruction because of your mistake. They get it way down the line because it's not going to go unpunished. All right, all right. Have I got a witness? Yes, yes. So now Aiken is simply sitting here. He's doing his thing. Aiken chilling. 
He wasn't one that was sent to the battle. Mm -hmm. He had the house. Don't nobody know what's going on, Pop. He said that talking about what well, the time is right. Cash is just going in. She I got me a robe, I'm gonna make it look like I got it going on if I don't. I'm gonna get down there, I'm gonna trade some of this gold, Josh. I'm gonna get me, man, I'm gonna get me a couple of good old oxes and cows, blemishlessness. I'm gonna make sure they look good so when I trade them. In other words, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna launder some of this stuff. I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wash it. Come on, Pastor, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send it through the, a good channel. I'm gonna take this dirty money, send it to the good laundry, and then I'm gonna get the good dry clothes, clean clothes out the wash. So when they look at it, they look at it and believe that I got this stuff legitimately, yeah. not realizing and understanding. You can't fool God like that. Yeah. Yeah. You can fool man some of the time, yes, sir. but you can't fool God none of the time. Yes, sir. Yeah. So now Aiken has living his life. He, in other words, like the kids say, uh, Mother Brian, he was living his best life. <laughs> he had a hole in his tent. <laughs> Come on here, somebody. But he had a hole in his tent that was filled up with some stuff. And it was some stuff that was valuable stuff. Yes. But it was some stuff that he didn't have permission to have. Exactly. But he was living his best life. Watch. Yes. And watch this. I don't know about you, but when you do something that's not right, I'm talking about myself. Yes. When I do something that I know is not right, whether it's bad or, or just no, I know it's not right, I feel convicted. Yes. Amen. Yes. And when you feel convicted, you tend to walk around and you'll have that look on your face that other people that, that have a relationship with God can detect and identify that it's something ain't right about what's going on with you at that moment. Have, have you ever been there? You walking around, you got that smile on your face, but behind that smile, you're sitting there, I wonder if anybody know. Because when you've done something wrong, you're worried about who all know. Amen, amen. Have I got a witness? Yes, when you do something wrong, you're trying to figure out how many folk know. And everywhere you go, if somebody treats you a little bit different, you're going to believe that they know what you're trying to hide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or conscious of something else, but that ain't really always your conscious. When you got a relationship with God, that's the Holy Spirit jacking with your inner man, letting you know you know you're wrong. Yeah. And instead of you walking in your wrongness, why don't you just repent and turn yeah. before everybody do find out? Yeah. Because when God allows it to be exposed, he's going to allow it to be exposed before he ought to let you know uh, just how bad you've done. Yeah. He's going to take something around you yeah. and it's going to affect somebody around you before it hits you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I had somebody that was walking with me right now. It, 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 it's funny how, it's funny how the soldiers that had nothing to do with Achan wind up dying in a battle that they were supposed to win. They died to some weaker people, and it wasn't that the people were weaker or the people were stronger. It was that God had removed his hand of grace and mercy and provision from over them because of disobedience. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to help you when I tell you that sometimes you mess up your own blessing because you got a hidden sin somewhere in your heart. You got a hidden sin somewhere that's buried up underneath your tent that needs to be exposed and God is not going to allow you to walk into the fullness of your blessing while you still got this hidden dirt underneath your tent. Your tent may not be something that you're sleeping in. Your tent may be the tent on your heart. The tent might be the tent in your mind. The tent might be the tent that's covering your forgiveness. The tent might be the intent of why you're not tithing. The tent might be all the gossip. The tent might come on here somebody. Whatever the tent is, you got something in it or underneath it that ought not be there and it is preventing God from blessing you the way he should yes. because you have unexposed sin. All right, all right, all right. So Achan was at this place now but he was chill. Men are dying and then God decides to allow Joshua to know something. But he had Joshua he talked to Joshua because the Bible was saying that Joshua was Looking all funny faced. He was looking like, man, what the world? What? Have you ever seen that? So, what? Somebody gonna do this today on your football? Your football team is supposed to be. You know, your Come football team is, is supposed to be the one. And if your football team lose, the first thing you gonna do is look at the mirror like, what in the world just happened? Why? 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 So, so now, so, so, so now, Joshua's like, wait a minute. This should have been the battle we just came from. Ain't nothing like the one we in now. Mm -hmm. And you need to tell me 
that we couldn't win this thing? Mm. What's wrong? And at that moment, watch. God will put people in your life mm -hmm. for a period of time and yes. a reason. Yes. And he'll allow them to be spoken to. Yes. Because you're not listening when he was speaking to you. All right, all right, all right. And then when God allows for this person to be spoken to, now you've got to be careful because now this person has been in, put in position to open up the door to exposure. Yes. So God talked to Joshua and he says, Joshua, listen here. He says, the reason why this is happening the way it is is because I gave an order. Amen. And now I'm talking to you because you're the one I gave the order to. Right, I talk right. to you because you're the one that I've given the command to. Yeah. I'm talking to you. I want to help somebody right here. Yeah. This is the reason why you got to stop second guessing what your pastors or your leaders are saying to you when they're telling you something. If they heard from God and they told you, your job is to do what you heard them say. And if you don't believe that they said it, get on your knees and ask God because the same thing God told your leader, he will tell you if you get in position. When he speaks it, because God is never going to tell a leader to do something if he's not prepared to tell the people himself. But he didn't tell the people himself. He told the people through his leader that this is what the problem is. He says, listen, there's a problem in the camp. There's somebody that did the opposite of what I said. He says, now you've got to go and make it right. Joshua, he probably said, I didn't have nothing to do with that. I did what you said to do. So why I got to go and find out who messed up? Yes, yes, yes. And the reason why the leader has got to find out who messed up is because if the leader goes without the Discovering who messed up, uh -huh. then that starts the ball rolling to more people messing up. Yes, and if you messed up now because of what one person's bad decision was, what happens when I got five people that made bad decisions? Yes, now I'm really not going to win any battles. Now I'm really not going to come into any blessings. And now the structure of the church, and now the wholesome of the church, and now the spirit of God that dwells in the church doesn't want to come because I'm just as guilty by not pointing out what the sin is and casting it out the camp as you are for bringing the sin in the camp Amen. in the first place. Yes, 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 yes. So the same way God gives me a word to encourage your soul, he'll also give me a word mm -hmm. to put you in check when you've done something wrong. Yes. All right. That's why when people come to church and they hear you preaching and they'll sit back and they feel guilty, they're sitting there looking all crazy and the first thing they say after the church is over, they'll come up to the pastor and say, you know, you were speaking to me. You must have been a fly on the wall in my house. How you doing all my business? Have you ever stopped to think, I don't know your business, but the Holy Spirit know your business. And if I'm a man of God that listens to what God say, I'm not talking to you about your business. I'm talking God's business. And if you're the one that the business is for, then stop talking about, oh, you walking out. You, you all in my business. No, I'm not in your business. I'm in God's business. And God's business says, if you're wrong, then you need to make your wrong right. right, right because everybody right. should have yes, to suffer. Yes, yes, yes. Because of your bad choices. Yes, Lord. So now Joshua has to go. In those days, it's funny though, because if you ever notice how they came up with decisions, they came up with decisions with casting lots. Amen. And if you ever check this out, casting lots is almost like rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> <laughs> but they did, they had straws. Mm -hmm. And what they would do is, it's like they eliminated straws, and then whoever was left with the biggest straw, that, that, that's who they decided. So now they go to the camp. You had all these different tribes that are here in the children of Israel, and they drew straws, which would, which determined which one of the camps they were going to go to, right. which one of them they were going to talk to. And ain't it amazing? Ain't it amazing? This is how God is. Ain't it amazing with everybody that's there? It was three of them that they went to, but only one of them was the one that they had to go to. Not everybody. That's like in this church right now. If, if we had to cast lots right now, out of everybody that looked guilty, Mike wasn't even here a couple of weeks ago. But Mike is the one. <laughs> but he wasn't in it. But the lot fell on him. So that means we got to go to him too. Have I got a witness? Yeah. So when they got to, watch this. When Joshua got to Achan, he didn't even go to him and say, you know, he has a problem around here. He did what to Achan what Jesus did to Judas. Remember Judas, Jesus told Judas, one of y'all up in here, it's going to forsake me. Mm. One of y'all will turn your back. Yes, Lord. He knew who it was. Mm -hmm. But instead of pointing him out, he just says, just do it quick. Huh. Joshua came to Achan 
And he told Achan, you know, there's some, some trouble in the camp. Somebody to put their hands on something they ain't had no biggest touch. Mm -hmm. Son, it is you. Mm -hmm. And it's something I know is you, but I'm going to tell you, if it is you. <laughs> you know what that was? That was God allowing for Joshua to extend some grace and mercy mm -hmm. and give him enough room to come to the front before final judgment was passed. God is so sovereign. He's a God of another opportunity that he'll give you a chance up until the very last moment for you to confess and get it right before he allowed final judgment to be passed upon you. If you don't believe that, think about the robber that was on the cross next to Jesus. When he was there, he told Jesus before it was time for him to die, he told Jesus, he says, Lord, forgive me, but remember me when you go into your paradise. Remember me, oh God, when you leave this place. And Jesus says, you know what? As of this day, you shall be with me in paradise. Not long after that, the Bible lets us know that the Roman soldiers went up, the Jewish soldiers went over, and they killed them, broke their legs to make sure that they was dying on the cross. But he didn't have to worry about dying a horrible death because at that moment, dying was meaning that I was being ushered into the presence of God because I got right before my last moment. And the good thing is, God, before he'll suck the last breath of out of you, will give you a chance to get it right before the light comes on to your yes. negative sin yes. Yes. that has yes. caused oh, harm to everybody else. Yes. Yes. So now we're looking. He lets him know, I know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Achan, when he confessed, this is what he said. He said, he said, I saw, in other words, I looked with my eyes, mother, and I seen something that was plenty delicious. Mm -hmm. I seen something that was nice to me. I seen something that made me hungry for it. I saw something that whipped my appetite. I saw something that ain't nobody else got. I saw something that can make me the man. I, I saw something. Have y'all ever been in that place where you saw something that just you just felt that you had to have it because it would really just make your status and just 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 I just saw something. Come on, somebody. I, I saw something. So he said, I saw. He said, I coveted. In other words, not only did he see it, but now in his mind, he took ownership in his mind before he even took possession of what he what was he needs. When, 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 when God tells us that we should not covet thy neighbor's wife or our neighbor, that means we're not supposed to put ourselves in a position to where we want what our neighbor got. Right. Or we want our neighbor yes, or, or any of those things. But he looked, he began to lust after what he wanted, after what he saw. And then what happens, watch, the moment that your eye gate lines up seeing something that your flesh is desiring, now all of a sudden it gets into your heart. And now your heart begins to want something. And then your mind begins to process, come on here, what it is that you like and what makes your flesh feel good. So your eye saw something. Your heart made you decide that you wanted it. Your mind said, if you want it good enough, then I'm going to put forth the action for you to make it happen. And then the mind says, you saw, you want, so now go get it. And so he said, I saw, I coveted, and then I took. And not only did he see and covet and take, but he took and he brought and he took and he hid and he covered up and he lived his best life so he thought. Yes, sir. Because now Joshua says, you need to get it right. All right. Mm -mm. All right. But here, after Joshua was put to the table, then that's when he admitted that he did something wrong under the table. Right, right. But Joshua had every opportunity, I'm not Joshua, Achan had every opportunity to put it on the table before Joshua even came and pulled the table back. All right. All right. What am I trying to say to somebody? You know you did wrong, yeah. so why are you waiting for somebody to move the table before they sweep up the crumbs that fell yeah. off the table? Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Right. That's right. My kids, I got grown kids at home, and they cracks me up because they go in the kitchen and they cook on the stove, and what burns my britches is I go in the kitchen and I know what you cook because there's evidence of it still on the stove. Yeah. And I sit and I say, why do you leave eggs juice on the stove? I didn't cook no eggs. Well, who cooked the eggs? You the only one home. You've been the only one home for the last week. How you did not do the eggs? Now, if you didn't cook the eggs, I gotta find out who coming up in my house while I'm at home leaving yeah, eggs on the yeah, stove. Yeah. Because now I find out, if you clean up your mess, yeah. the only reason I know is something gone because it ain't in the refrigerator no yeah. more. But if there's no evidence, then I have no reason to blame you. Yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. That's right. 
So he had time to clean up his mess. Yeah. I'm trying to help somebody right yeah. here. I don't know somebody yeah. here right now. I've been having some sin for about the last two weeks and a half. He's sitting up here thinking that it's all good. But look, God sent me here today to tell you this message that now is about to be exposed. And you better give it up before he turn it up. Come on. You need to give it up before he turned it up. Because if he turns it up, there ain't no turning back. And if he turns it up, now you've got to go through the whole process of punishment. You've got to go through the whole process because now... Joshua has told him what the Lord has told him. But not only did God tell Joshua that there's sin, but he said until the sin leaves the camp, uh -huh. you ain't going to win no more, no more battles. That's, That's right. Do y'all remember when I first got here? I said if we don't get from unforgiveness and hurt, we'll never be able to process the journey to, to healing and growth. Yeah. Because what happens is when we hold on to unforgiveness, it is a sin before God. Yeah. And as long as it is sin in the camp, then yeah. the, the motion of moving forward will never happen. And every battle we fight, we will lose simply because we have sin. That is no that, that that refuses to lead, and the leader has to be the one to expose the sin yeah. and say, "Now it's time to get rid of." That's right. Mm -hmm. That's, That's right. right. Yes. The cancer. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. So listen, watch. So now he tells Achan. Remember the message is called the rippling effect of sin. Come on here, somebody. I can't get too wild today. I, <laughs> My organist ain't here. She ain't gonna push this. You play organ? Okay. <laughs> I just like to see you smile. Amen. <laughs> but now the ripple starts. What do you mean? See, because it hit the soldiers. And now they're saying, Aiken, after he's told, he said, I, 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 I saw it. I covered it. I took it. I hit it, it's there, and now the effect is, God says you got to get that sin out of the camp. Yes, sir. But what you've got to recognize is, in the Old Testament, when you did things wrong, not only did it affect you, but it affected everything that was connected to you. Mm -hmm. And the punishments back then was very severe. That's why I'm glad that we got salvation, right. because I don't think we could deal with the punishments now that they had back then. Yeah. It wasn't one of those things where they slapped you on the wrist. They yeah. stoned you, they, 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 they killed you, they killed everybody. Yeah. I don't know, have I got a witness? Remember yeah. we talked a few weeks ago about Daniel in the lion's den. They lied on Daniel, mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden, the people that lied got thrown in, them and everybody that's connected to them, they all got thrown in. So your kids got to die because of the bad decisions that you made. Your dog yeah. ain't did nothing wrong, was faithful to his master, but he got to die because you made the wrong decision. Your goldfish, and your goldfish is just asking for some food, but he got to die because you made the wrong decision. Ain't that something? And if your child is pregnant, your child and the baby that's on the inside, they have to die because you made the wrong decision about something that's cruel and harsh, but it was the law at that time, and if you jacked up, yes, yes. so he said they took a, now watch, this is what I thought was cold. Pastor West, I thought this was the coldest thing. Now, now watch. They said not to touch any of these things because it was supposed to be for God's treasury. Right, it was supposed right. to be, it was, it was sacred to the Lord. Right. Are you with me? It was supposed to be the sacred thing for the Lord. And so he takes now, now he, he disobeyed the order and then he stole from God. And so now God says, okay, this is what you want. This is what you got. So when they, when, when they, 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 they call all of Israel, not just Joshua, Everybody called him and said, no, we're getting ready to go out to the battle. Uh -huh. <laughs> In other words, my dad used to always say, when you act up, I'm going to take you out on the side of the barn. I'm like, we in California, ain't no barns out here. <laughs> well, on the same side of the house, on the side of the church, wherever we're going, you're going to think it was a barn by the time I finish busting your side of your head to the white man's show. Never mind, this Anyway, so, so, <laughs> so now he says, I take him out of the valley. They took him out into the valley. And they said, they stoned him. They stoned his wife. Mm -hmm. They stoned his kids. Mm -hmm. They stoned his donkeys. Mm -hmm. They stoned his cows. Mm -hmm. They stoned his mules. Mm -hmm. They stoned his mom, wow. his daddy. Everything and everybody that was connected to them. And then as I began to do my research, my research was telling me this. He says, now why would the family have to die when the family didn't commit the sin. Amen. And one theologian said it was probably because the family knew 
there was something different in the house because I don't get uh, 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 First Lady West, hey, let me ask you a question. If, 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 if you got something in your house and you leave and you come back and there's something different in your house, ain't you going to be the first one to know that there's something that's been moved in your house? And at that moment, you're going to ask some questions about who's been there and moved something in the house. So what person came in this tent that had to be lifted up and a whole dug and everything? Who, what person going to come in there and know something ain't been moved? Amen. Yes, sir. My mama used to crack me up because if the fruit bowl, y'all used to have them fruit bowls that had the flashing fruit in it, you know, folks would come in and always think that they could eat the fruit and realize it was plastic. I mean, I, I, never, I, I never, never, But if the fruit bowl was moved a little bit to the right and my mama walked in the room, first thing she would say, who been in my house? My fruit bowl's been moved. <laughs> so how is it that a hole has been dug, your tent has been laid back out, but if the ground ain't the same way it was when you left, you should be able to notice that something has been moved around in your place. Yes, and since that person did something, and now the evidence of it is apparent in your life, and if you don't move away from it yourself because they don't want to do what they got to do, then yes, you are subject to the same penalty that they are because you had a chance to get it right before yeah. Charles didn't yeah. get it right. All right. All right. So, so, so we look at all these movie stars. That's paying all these millions of dollars to get their kids in school on scholarships. Um, if the husband and wife did it, both the husband and the wife suffered for it. Yes. But if the husband did it and the wife didn't know, but the wife knew, even though she acted like she didn't know, right. <laughs> yeah. they still tried to get her too. Yes, yes. Because at some point, whatever goes on in the house, right. if we're in the same house, you got to know something about the stuff I'm doing. Yes, yes. So therefore, you're just as guilty yes, as right. I am. Because if I go steal a million dollars and I come and buy my dad a brand new car and he don't question how he got a brand new car, cash, but he just drives a brand new car, he's subject to get in trouble too because he can't explain how we got that brand new car right. and our budget don't say that we can even afford the car we got that's already yeah. paid off. Yeah. Yeah. I can't even afford my paid off car. Yeah. That's how bad I am, but I got a brand new car right. that's paid off. How do I explain that? Yeah. So now he gets in trouble for driving something that I wind up initiating because he didn't push away from it knowing it wasn't right. Yes. Have I got a witness? Yes. Amen. So now it says he stole everybody. This is what cracked me up. He, they, they said they they stoned him to death. They burnt him up. Then they put rocks over him to make it a, a big pile of dirt. Mm -hmm. But they put the gold stuff in there too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, God, you got your gold back. <laughs> so, so why you have to steal the gold too? Yeah. Watch this. Because God is simply saying this. If it was clean, and then you touched it and made it dirty. Yeah. Then why? Even though I know that I can make dirty clean. Yeah. As an example of who I am and what I'm all about. Mm. If you dirty and you took something from me that's clean. Right. You die, it dies with you. All right, all right. All right. In other words, God is saying, I didn't need that little bit of gold. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't even about the gold. Yeah, exactly. but what it was about was, it was about the obedience. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't about the material, but yeah. it's about the obedience. Yeah. The obedience is not, is not physical, but it's spiritual. Yeah. I, come on here. Yeah. So I don't need the material things because the Bible says that, that my, my God owns a cattle on a thousand hills. The, the, the Bible lets me know that he holds the world in the palm of his hand. So that means he has everything. That, that, means, that lets me know that if I'm an heir of the kingdom, that, that I have access to it. I have access to it. So if i got access, then why do I need to take it? And if I take something that God has already given me permission to have, all i got to do is ask him if I can have it. If I take it because I'm greedy, if I take it because I'm in the flesh, if I take Take it because I'm all about myself. Yeah. Then now I put myself in position to hurt everybody in my family. Yeah. And that that I took, it lets them see it don't mean nothing to God, the yeah. stuff. Yeah. I'm going to bury it with the sin of the person that committed it. And the, watch this. And what he took wasn't even a glimpse of what God was trying to give. So in other words, he says, I'm trying to bless you, Israel. And so in order for me to bless you, I must take the dirt out because if I let him get away with this, in the next battle, he's liable to take something else, and when it's all said and done, he'll have enough to try to overthrow the man of God that I put in position, because I'm going to look at what I got, and I'm going to...
I'm a fool to people that believe that I'm more powerful because of what I have. Yeah. And now I can move the man of position, out of position, by enticing the people with what I have, yes. by what I took. Yes. So God's not going to allow that to happen. That's why he said things have to be done in order. Yes. And when things are done decently and in order, then I must follow the process. And the process is simply this. If I don't touch it, then don't touch it. If I'm not supposed to move it, then don't move it. If I ain't even supposed to look at it too hard, then don't look at it too hard. If I'm supposed to go in and do what I've got to do and walk around, watch. The Bible even talked about when you when you get stuff. Watch this. The Jehoshaphat. Same thing happened with Jehoshaphat, but on the other side. Because God told them they're coming up against you. Jehoshaphat wasn't worried about what they had. Jehoshaphat was worried about them coming and taking them out. And God says, you need to go and y'all pray, y'all fast, y'all do what you want to do. And then when they finish, God said, Jehoshaphat, you assign them to do this, you assign them to do this, you assign them to do that. And as Jehoshaphat put his assignments out, and everybody obeyed the order of Jehoshaphat that came through God by the servant that God sent. What happened is the ones that came to fight them and kill them are now on the battlefield killing each other. Yeah. Now, isn't it a shame? Now, watch this. Why am I going to battle with gold on anyway? <laughs> <laughs> First lady West, I like what the, what the, what the ladies tell me, what the, especially the, the, the ladies in the hood, but they tell me, girl, that girl made me mad. I, I took off my earrings. They go, mm -hmm. I took off my earrings. I took my, in other words, you ain't messing up my jewelry. I, we gonna fight, but my chains ain't getting broken. And look, it, her nails ain't even jewelry, but I'm gonna take my nails and all that. You know, my tangible stuff that look good. And, and then she had on the weed that was supposed to be sold in, and then she took a couple of hair clips out, and she took that. Why? Because I got stuff I don't want messed up in this fight that I'm about to have. Are you listening to me? But now these people went to battle. When yeah. gold, the Bible says when they got to the place of the battle, they said it was so much gold, it was so much that it took them over three days to go and collect it all. Wow. <laughs> but in the other incidents, God said, don't touch it. Yeah. Jehoshaphat, then he said, they dead. Mm. Y'all take them right? Mm. Take the girl. You know why? Because I'm blessing you for being obedient. Yes. yes. So when God got on, 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 on all that and they took Achan out, now God says, now go up and fight against Achan. I mean, against Ai. And watch what happens. When the sin left the camp, God's hand rested back on the kids. All right. What am I saying? But too many people had to die yeah. because of the one mistake of one person. Yes, yes. yes. I'm helping you right here. Whatever your sin is, hmm. look beyond yourself. Yes, Lord. Hmm. Because there are going to be some people that suffer from your sin that you yes, can never, yes, ever, yes, ever yes. identify. Yes, Lord. There are going to be peaceless nights that somebody's connected to you mm. will have because of your sin. Yes. Mm. There's people that won't come to church that's connected to you because of your sin. Mm. There's people that won't tithe because of the sin of the men and the women that stand here. Mm. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. yes, and even the leader himself is still subject to punishment if he does opposite of what the man of God has told him to do. Mm -hmm. So therefore, watch this. If God shows me your sin, matter of fact, we had this in we had this in Bible study. Y'all remember? Mm -hmm. You asked me a question on if one of my deacons was out missing around. On his wife mm -hmm. with another man's wife. Mm -hmm. Would I sit him down? Mm -hmm. And 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 my answer was, of course so. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't, it's not just a black eye on the deacon. Yes. But it's a black eye not just on the church. That's right. Mm -hmm. But it's a black eye to the God that we serve. Yes. In yes. the eyes of people that's trying to understand how to get a relationship with God. Yes. It gives God a black eye because it says, how does the pastor know that the deacon is being unclean, but let the deacon stay in position? Mm. And watch, if I let it go unchastised, if I let it go unpunished, now it's given a signal to other deacons, and it's given a signal to other ministers, and it's given a signal to other choir members, mm. 
And it's okay for you to have these intramarital affairs. Pastor, cool with it. So a spiritually minded person to come in and say, if pastor ain't tripping off the deacons, the choir members, pastor must be doing it too. Because it's easy for me to overlook something that I'm comfortable in myself. And Joshua wasn't comfortable in the fact because Joshua was a man after God's own heart. And he wasn't comfortable in the fact that everybody is suffering because of one man's choice. So I'd rather get that one piece of, because when you go to the doctor and they say you got cancer, if they catch it early, they don't cut your whole body. You can just get that one piece of cancer so the rest of your body can continue to flourish. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. But what happens if they recognize the cancer but don't do nothing about the cancer? Mm. And then when they come back to get the cancer later on, it has spread and now it's too late. Yes. Don't allow your sin to be the cancer right. that hurts somebody else in your life. Mm -hmm. Because you may never, ever get a chance to see what it does. All right. But just know that somebody is going to be affected by unconfessed sin mm. that you carry with you. Amen. 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 Maybe I'll preach next week. I don't <laughs> Amen. But, but, but God has a way of sometimes we just got to talk about it mm -hmm. in order that we get a clear understanding because sin is something that we can't play with. That's right. And that's the reason why when David said, Lord, help me to hide your word in my heart so to keep me from sinning against you. And when you sin in the world, you are sinning against God because he tells you what thou shalt not do. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And no matter how big or how small the sin is, see. sin is still sin. Amen. Right. Right. If Mother Maddie uh, 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 shoots somebody, mm -hmm. she ain't gonna shoot nobody. But if she shoots somebody, mm -hmm. it ain't no different than if Mother Brian lied on somebody. Right. That's right. That's because right. Because it's not being judged on how severe law said the sin is. It's judge on how heaven says what you should not do. Amen, somebody? Yes, Lord. That, that being said, this week I challenge you to examine yourself. Examine your life. Examine and ask God. There, there's a prayer that I say every day and every night. And I say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. The sins that I know about mm -hmm. and the sins that I may have committed that I don't know about. Right, right. But then I ask them, show me the ones I don't know mm -hmm. so that I won't keep repeating them. Right. Because if you don't ask God to expose the sin to you, how do you know what to repent from? Mm -hmm. You can't be vague and say, Lord, forgive me for all my sins, but you're sinning while you're thinking about something. Mm -hmm. You're asking him out of one side of your mouth, but you're thinking about something that's sinful on the other side of your mouth. But if you really want to be right with God, Ask him to show you your sin. So the next time that you ask him for forgiveness of your sin, you can say, I saw, mm -hmm. I coveted, but Lord, before I take it, you showed me that it wasn't right. Mm -hmm. So stop me before I take, mm -hmm. because at this point, now I've actually gone all the way in. I tell young men, if you're married and you ain't all the way delivered, mm -hmm. The enemy will tie you with some of the most beautiful women you've ever seen in your life. Before you covet, you can see. <laughs> but before you covet, you need to ask God. Because the enemy will dangle this job. He will dangle this in front of you because he yes, wants sir. to keep you at a place of sinfulness. Yes, sir. But the moment you recognize it because God has exposed it, now you say, God, take that desire of the eye away from me. So when you see, it doesn't cause you to covet. Yes. Lust after. It makes you see and go on about your business. Amen. Amen, somebody? Amen. Money, clothes, them shoes that's been in Macy's go sell for the last two weeks. Come on. Somebody got their bonus and they all go to Macy's after church. Amen. We need to ask God to show us our sins so that we can repent for those sins, turn, and be in right standings with God. Man. If you don't care about yourself, 
care about the ripple effect that it will have on other people that's involved. That's right, that's right. People on the job, mm -hmm. people in your family, people at your church, mm -hmm. your sphere of influence with your friends, yes, your kids, your kids' kids that are not here yet. Mm -hmm. They all are subject to the ripple effect of your sin. All right. If your sin goes unconfessed. Mm -hmm. Is that a Amen. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. I heard somebody say one day it's tight, but it's right. Amen. 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 That being said, this is a time that we have that we want to use. Now watch. Normally I would say, if you're somebody that needs the prayer for a situation like this to raise your hand, but you know, we don't have to do that. Because it ain't nobody's business. It's between you and the Lord. And at this Thank moment, you, we're just going to have a moment of prayer. And whether this is you, or whether it's somebody that you know, or whether it's somebody you don't know, or somebody that you know but you don't know that they need this prayer for. We're going to, 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 to just pray and believe that God is going to prick the hearts of whoever it is that's holding on to sin. In this church, out of this church, connected to us on our job, in our families, or whatever it is. That he pricks their heart and that he goes to them, to him and get it right. Before their sin wind up affecting them too. Amen? Amen. Let's bow. Father, we thank you now. We thank you, O oh God, because... Your word declares that your word shall never return to you void, and that every word that proceeded out of the mouth, God, is the truth. So we know that this word is the truth. And we know, Father God, that you're the same God in the, the days of Joshua that you are in the times of today. And all of the sins and, and all of the punishments are not as severe now as they were then. Uh, as it looks in the physical sense, we know, Father God, that the spiritual nature of the sin and the punishment is still relevant today. So I'm asking God that whether it's somebody in this building under the sound of my voice, or whether it's somebody that we're connected to, or whether it's somebody that maybe we may come in contact with, put your spirit of conviction on us so heavy, Father, that when we walk into the atmosphere, that, Lord, your power, your anointing, Lord, will flow from us heavy enough that that person will feel the conviction that's necessary for them to come to you and ask you to forgive them <clears throat> and put them back in right standings with you. I ask you, O oh God, that as we pray that you would allow us the favor to know and understand that if we ask you to show us the error of our ways, God, that you would be so gracious to show us that we may not only repent from it, God, but that we'll readjust our life, that we won't continue to do these things to dishonor who you are. So we thank you right now. And I'm asking you, oh God, right now, that you chase away anything that's not like you, unforgiveness, uh, strife, pride, gossip, jealousy. I ask you, oh God, that you push it away from any of us, whether it's directly in us or anybody that's connected to us. Give us more of you, Father God, that we can serve you and that we can run after you, Father God, with zeal and expectancy, oh God, that you will help us and let us be used to help advance the kingdom of God. And we thank you for it now, God. We honor you and praise you. We magnify your holy name because we know that it is so in the name of Jesus. Now, there may be someone here that, that may not know God for the pardon of your sin, and you may want to rededicate your life. If that's you, while all of our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, just raise your hand where you are. You say, I want to rededicate my life, or I want to accept Christ for the first time. If that's you, amen. And the second call is if you want to be a part of this church. If you want to be a member of Cedar Grove, just raise your hand. and We would love to have you be a part of this ministry. Amen. As I see that there are none, but yet there are still room at the cross, we say thank you, O oh God. We love you, we honor you, and we praise you for you alone are learn. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody that agrees with the prayer, say thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. And amen. 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 Now let's prepare ourselves for our...